up everyone, it's Mr. Crucial here at my test world. I'm going to do a video tutorial today on a 16-bit shift register. Here I have a 10-bit rotating shift register used for traffic lights. So there's one application for a shift register. If you were to bust open your calculator right now, you'd probably find one of those in there. And uh, more than likely, if you're searching for this video, you already know what's up. But the first circuit in the shift register is a D flip flop. And I want to give a huge shout out to Roboticos. Me and him have been collaborating on some pretty wicked ideas. And uh, basically we came up with a universal shift register. So this is where it all begins with the D flip flop. Like that. Now the D flip flop has two inputs. It has a clock input down here and just above the clock input is your data input. Okay, along with those two inputs you have one output and that one output is here this end of the unit. <coughs> so we're gonna make this a 16 bit so let's count out 16 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13, 14, 15, and 16. So it's just laying these blocks here. Alright, now that we have all the blocks in place, we can smash out the unnecessary pieces. Okay, now this is the fun part, laying in the hardware. Start off with the redstone. And then finally the torches. Sweet. So we got our D flip flops all in place. I can lay in our clock line. Okay, now we're going to hook up a mono stable circuit to this clock line here because it requires a short pulse. So the mono stable, the blocks like this it has two torches one here and one on the front of the unit three pieces of dust and two repeaters now the repeater should be one maxed out and then another repeater you can operate this unit manually by placing a button or lever on it but we're gonna go balls out and hook up a basic clock to the unit so two repeaters this direction beside that two repeaters in the opposite direction piece of dust can have it, add a lever there for control adjust the timing a bit and stick a torch on the side there it goes so we're going to turn that off for the time being we need to uh, check out the distance on this line so we're going to bonk out this wire here temporarily and follow it and it looks like we need a repeater right here I'm going to make sure it reaches the last E flip flop and it does now we've just messed up the ticks for this side of the unit because these D flip flops now have an extra tick so on the right side of the repeater we're going to add an extra tick on these ones here just to compensate for that and if you're going over 16 bit or whatever, you can 
always plug in between every 16 bit and just make sure your ticks are all lined out through all the clocks it's very important so now that you have your clock line in place what we're gonna have to do is uh, chain up the D flip flops now the way this works you can have it go from left to right or right to left but it's very simple basically the output of the D flip flop goes into the next D flip flops input so depending on which direction you want to take it say we're moving from left to right we're gonna hook this D flip flops output up to the input on the D flip flop to the right and so on and so forth and if you want the bit to go right to left you would do vice versa <clears throat> so Robotikos pointed this out it's a very easy way to stick the to hook them up basically to go from uh, output to input there's a very simple way of doing that and that's utilizing this top line here basically um, we extend it out a little ways and we're going to use a torch like that and basically the line is going to drop down right into the next unit's input perfectly now here's the trick on the next unit here we're going to have to uh, extend it out one extra block and because right here we would have a problem with the wires cross contaminating so what you need to do is add an extra repeater in the unit and basically we're going to rotate this design a little like uh, backwards L's or something J's little J's and um, yeah basically one gets two repeaters and then the next one gets a single repeater and that's just to prevent from cross contamination of uh, the wires so keeps everything nice and simple it's a quick and easy way of doing that now there's a little bit of an issue because this line here has three ticks of delay one being the torch and the two repeaters and this line here only has two ticks the one torch and the one repeater so we're gonna have to add an extra tick on the single repeater units just to compensate for that so let me just hop in bed really quick here and then I'll go ahead and uh, dolly chain them all together real quick Alright, so now that the shift registers are dolly chained together, we're going to run some tests on this baby. So let's replace the wire on the monostable and flick on the clock here. And stick a bit in the register. Okay, what I'm noticing here, this glitch right here isn't supposed to happen, that's a timing issue. So we're going to refer back to our mono stable. And I left root for customization, so we're going to add another tick in there. The bigger you go with this circuit, the more tick on the mono stable you might require. And it looks like it's working now. The bit is shifting from right to left, and it's going to shift out of the register right out so that that's called serial out so the shift register is definitely working you can add your bits in there as it goes along wherever you want to add them really it's up to you and basically they're going to shift parallel out so that's pretty sweet now the next thing we're going to wire up will be the reset. So the reset's pretty easy. Basically 
you just need to zap these cables or wires up here with power and we can zap two of them at a time with one torch very simply so let me just lay in the blocks for the reset all right lay in your redstone and one torch per two D flops so that works out perfect now you have to invert this signal here so let's just stick a quick inverter in there and basically as long as you control this torch you control the reset I'll give you a quick demonstration you're going to need a repeater in the reset right here just so it reaches all the torches but I'll give you a demo we'll shoot some bits in the register random bits you can see that the bits are being represented on the outputs we'll turn on the clock the bits are shifting from right to left and they're going to shift parallel out and stop the clock and there's still bits in my register say I want to reset it you can have a pulse on this doesn't have to be a lever Oops. <laughs> but flick that line up there and it resets the unit for you so that's really cool now another thing I like to do to this shift register is make it rotating if you need an oscillating circuit but uh, it's really simple basically the last D flop in the unit we're going to extend its output out and we're going to wrap it around the back of the unit and it goes on the input of the first D-flop now come out the side rather than the back this time and we're doing this for a reason we only want to add one repeater whereas if we came out the back we would need the second re repeater here for to prevent the cross contamination but we're only going to use a single repeater and the reason for that being is because we need to match the three ticks of delay between each D flop. So let's run this line. Now this line does require an inverter. So we're going to stick our first tick of delay right here. That's one tick. The inverter being here will be the second tick. And then the third repeater here is the third tick or second repeater there is the third tick if that made sense <laughs> it's to match the delay in between each D flip flop so that's how that's done now it's a rotating um, shift register we can uh, extend our outputs by adding torches here if we want gives us more room to play in the future for when we expand on this but the clock is now hooked up the rotating feature is hooked up and the reset kinda wish I wired up my clock on this side now but it's very easy to do let me just turn on my clock and let's see a bit rotate Okay, so all the bits are reset. We'll add a value in there. It's going along quite slowly. We're going to speed it up a little bit. Okay, here it comes. Notice I inverted it with torches. And it's reached its 16th bit. And there it was reappeared back on its first bit so it has rotated around in a circle or a sequence and uh, keep in mind it was all the same tick length so that's very awesome super duper awesome and of course we can reset it we can add multiple bits obviously right and have multiple bits rotating which is uh, more or less the point 
Um, I found out some sneaky little features that you can add to this. I don't know if you're into this type of thing. It does require you to invert the whole uh, the whole signal here, the whole shift register. But if you go like this, basically add a NAND gate to this first circuit, and the NAND gate being these two torches. So this torch is now on, meaning this line is lit, and this torch is off. So basically, this torch is not going to play an effect on this line until I switch it off. Now when I switch it off, basically it's letting, it will let the unit oscillate its bit. For instance, we'll give it a bit now. So the unit set to zero and the clock is on. We'll give it a bit. And that's the reason why I inverted the signal. Now you can see my data. It, adding this feature does require you to invert the whole uh, shift register, but you can see my data is shifting along. And uh, like before, it's going to rotate. It's going to be a rotating shift register. So there it has reappeared. I'll add multiple bits. So we're gonna we have two bits in the shift register, three bits, and four bits. I've added four bits into my register, and they are doing the rotating feature. Now with the flick of this lever right here, because it's on the NAND gate and the signal is all inverted, it will switch it from a rotating shift register back to a parallel out register as seen now the bit is no longer rotating around it's just going out parallel so that's a simple way to add that feature as well NAND gate and I think that about wraps it up for my first video on shift registers Keep in mind, I'm going to make this bi-directional in the future. Me and Robotikos, I'm working pretty hard to make it universal. And this is just one of the core components of it. This thing's going to get pretty big and gnarly, but awesome with features. So, hope you guys build along and like the video. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Definitely check out Robotikos' channel as well. Peace, y'all.